Now, often the first thing that proponents of sadomasochism will say in their defense is that sadomasochism is nothing to do with feminism or politics because women do it too. In fact, sadomasochism is the only paraphilia in which women are involved in any serious way. Women's sexuality though, is socially constructed from a position of, of subordination and not domination. So women's involvement in any of the practices that are overwhelmingly promoted and engaged in by men is likely to represent the considerable differences that inevitably derive from women's subordinate status. The practice of sadomasochism is not as it is generally made out to be, simply an issue of the sexual freedom of equal adults, but consists of the acting out of the sexual dynamics of male domination. Men dominating, being violent towards and humiliating women is overwhelmingly the main way in which it takes place. A minority of, of men desire to play submissive roles but they cannot usually coax or force their female partners to play the role of dominance. So they repair to prostituted women who work as dominatrixes. Being submissive is dangerous for women as it can involve serious injury or even death. But when men play at this role with prostituted women, they're in little danger because they are, they are paying and they're in charge. Research on the role of women in BDSM, and there really isn't very much, found that men are generally the initiators of the practice and that women will usually engage only to please a partner. Women involved in the SM culture overwhelmingly prefer to engage in a submissive role. Homosexual men follow the pattern of women involved in the practice in preferring submissive roles. Now, the, to look at the history for a moment, the campaign to normalize sadomasochism began in the city, which was at the heart of gay male culture in the US, San Francisco. The promotion of sadomasochism was a prime feature of the sexual liberation of gay men that took place in the 1970s. San Francisco gained a reputation as a center for leather bars, and sadomasochist sex clubs for gay men, which had rooms for private sex. When many of these facilities began to close under the pressure of the HIV epidemic in the early 80s, some activists decided to stage the Folsom Street Festival, at which half-naked men would be tied to posts and flogged on the public street, and stalls sold fetish equipment. More than 400,000 people attend this celebration of violent sex yearly, and the profits go into the local gay sex industry. Some lesbians in, in San Francisco began to take part in local sadomasochist and leather groups, and the campaigning organization SAMWA was founded in the city in 1979 to promote the practice as healthy, positive, and feminist. Their publications and ideas led to the setting up of SM Dyke groups in other countries. The promotion of sadomasochism was always political and aimed at normalizing the practice and spreading its ideas. Gay and lesbian sadomasochists wore their regalia of black leather, straps, chaps, often including Nazi accoutrements such as swastikas and SS caps in public and in the London lesbian and feminist community to meetings and places of entertainment, to parades and at fairs and festivals. There was nothing private about the practice. It was out and unfortunately proud. As the practitioners sought to promote sadomasochism in feminist and lesbian communities, newsletters and events in the 1980s, a furious opposition was created from feminists involved in campaigns against male violence and pornography who aimed to create a sexuality of equality to further women's liberation, not a formalized eroticizing of women's subordination. Mm 